you join me at Acorn Fishery. Now uh, I arrived just on sort of first light, seven o'clock ish, and um, yeah, was greeted with torrential downpours. The drive was an absolute nightmare, and uh, yeah, it was mega mega windy as it as it is throughout the rest of the day, and sort of gusts up to anything up to 50 mile an hour. And uh, yeah, the drive wasn't the most pleasant to be quite honest with you. So I'm booked in for peg into peg 15 for the day. I'm here, got everything set up, um, bar obviously putting the rods out, the uh, pod is on the floor. I just got to go and dip my net, my sling and, uh, and my mat just before we commence fishing. And uh, yeah, then we can make a start on our, uh, our day ahead. So I will try and keep you up to date where I can throughout the day, tactics. I'll show you around sort of like this swim, what kind of, uh, you know, what you get with this swim bit more about the fishery itself so please do I do apologize from the start with the uh, any sort of the wind disturbance it is mega mega windy so uh, I'm going to go and get these go and get these dipped etc get back get these rods out into um, into the spots for you know I don't know best part of a few hours to start with and we'll go from there and uh, like I say yeah we'll, we'll get our day get our day going so uh, I will catch up with you a little bit later in the morning So peg 15, as you can see behind me, there is a, uh, a hut in this swim. So uh, if you're doing overnighters, then uh, there's a little bit of comfort there for you anyway. And if you're on a day session like myself, it's good to just chuck the gear in it, keep it out of the way of the wind and the rain and whatever else. So quite cool, not actually fishing one before, so something new for me. As you can see on the floor as well, just in case you are coming to fish, all the swims are sort of concreted out. So you may, there is a bit of grass on the side of this one, but you may want to think about bringing something that's obviously going to be able to uh, sit on top of the concrete as such. So I've got me, uh, my, my Witchwood Metalware there. So ideal for uh, having the, you know, the pod on the, on the concrete. So what have I got in front of me? Let's have a quick look. It is starting to spit again. So I've got a, a bridge coming down the right hand side here, which you can walk on to go and sort of uh, cast over, drop your rigs in the edge or bait up or retrieve any rigs that you may have got snagged from around the island. So I've got this bridge um, to play with. I've got obviously the front bit of this island here. I've got a bit of open water in front of me as well. I've got another sort of, uh, another sort of island here, which I've been told there is a uh, hole that possibly runs through the middle of this island somewhere so a bit of a cut through as such which might be um, something to uh, to think about when I'm fishing this swim and obviously you likewise as well if you're fishing this swim and apparently there is a hole somewhere within this island which is a bit of a cut through and again that's kind of like an L shape in this swim a bit of like a right angle in that corner so something that I might explore with a solid bag and again Another bridge there, which I don't think you can walk along, but I have been told there is some sort of like uh, tape on the here, possibly this or this. I've been told it's quite a good, quite a good area to stick a to stick a rod. So I think I'm going to uh, definitely put one down <clears throat> in this area. That wind is absolutely hacking down into that corner today as well. The other side of that bridge is uh, swim one's uh, water, I believe. So as long as I stay this side of the bridge, then you know there's not going to be any problems there. So that's all good. And I do like the, this margin as well. Uh, might actually flick one down here. I've got three rods to use today. So uh, there's plenty of options within this swim that can be explored. My first thinking is that uh, I'm probably gonna put one off the island. I have been round to the island and uh, took a rod round with me with just a bare lead and just underarmed the rod across the face of the island. So over there, just between the trees, I was just underarming a rod just down and sort of like one rod length out just having a little feel and uh, sort of like half a rod length out you're talking four or five foot and then if you edge it back like a set of rings a set of rings on your eye it's getting six to ten inches shallower and shallower I have watched the swans as well make their way around the island and sort of pick up leftover bait or any sort of bits and pieces that are down there so what I'm thinking is I might fish a little bit closer to myself like come off the island about a half a rod length to a rod length because I just don't want them swans interfering with my solid bags that I may be putting over there. And uh, 
Yeah, like I say, when I did put a rod out close to the island, you're talking, I don't know, two foot deep off it. So I wasn't, uh, I'm not really too, too worried about fishing too close, if I'm completely honest with you. What I might do, I've been told that this, uh, <clears throat> this statue, if you come a rod length off that, that's a, that's a, a good spot, a good area. So I think throughout the day, I'm going to use these solid bags and fish to anything that I might see or um, just areas that you guys have pointed out to me on social media and kind of just explore the swim and go with it to be quite honest with you like I say the wind is mega mega strong today it is bashing down in this corner so I'm um, just gonna get the rods out <clears throat> keep my eyes peeled for, for you know any sort of signs or shows or anything like that and keep everything crossed that um, you know I might get a fish sometime throughout the day so uh, so yeah I think like I say the rods are uh, set up solid bags are in the bucket wherever we are and uh, yeah, I think it's time to get these get these bad boys out and uh, get this session started. Right, so that's all three rods gone out. All sat there looking pretty. Now just waiting for one of them to sing. So I'll flick the camera around to show you what I uh, what I decided to do to you know just to start the day with really. So left hander, as I mentioned earlier, is a sort of a, a known area. It's from what I've been told by a few people. So I've uh, pretty much underarm solid bag down under this bridge. Went down nicely. <clears throat> then my middle rod went over to the uh, the island there so again that went down absolutely bang on those two casts pretty much I could have done them any better if I tried to be quite honest with you and the uh, third rod the right hand rod that has gone over towards the statue and uh, maybe a little bit shorter than I wanted to but it's in the area that I wanted it to be in so I thought you know what rather than redo it bang another one out there just going to give it a couple of hours then I can maybe like I say just just try moving it up and down the face of this island really um, and just seeing what you know what's what but that's all three rods gone out for the moment anyway I'm not actually seeing anything at the moment as I said it is uh, it is blowing her it's, wow yes yeah, just torrential this wind it's just full on in your face yeah once you step back in that cabin you're roasting your nuts off from this sun beating down in your face but this wind yeah it's uh, it's pretty full on but um it feels good it feels good for a bite it'd be encouraging to see something if i uh, you know in this sort of section of water would give me a little bit more little bit more hope but um yeah as you can see one minute it's uh, mega mega sunny <clears throat> next minute it looks like it could uh, could lash it down again but um the rods are out The rig itself is uh, sort of like three and a half inches long. It's a soft braid, so it's got no coating on it at all. And it's tied knotless knot style to basically a wide gape hook. Now that's my choice of uh, choice of hook for sort of like wafters. And if I'm gonna be using such a small rig, it's obvious that I'm gonna be putting it in a solid bag. So whenever I use solid bags, a wide gape hook is my, uh, is my choice of hook. So as I said, it's tied knotless knot style to the hook itself. It's got a little bit of silicon tubing on the shank of the hook there and a little bit of uh, shrink tubing just to cover the eye of the hook, just for like sort of knot, um, just to cover up the knot really and just to make things neat and tidy, bit anal like that to be fair. That's like I say, tied knotless knot style and then we have a juice wafter just tipped off at the end. So that is like I say, a wafter bait. So that'll lay flush on the lake bed that hook and that wafter just hover above the hook 
amongst all of the solid bag contents. Now, what I'm going to do throughout the day is just chop and change basically the hook baits, try and figure out what they fancy. So, in this pot, juice 10 mil wafters, I have sort of like 10 mil uh, multicolored wafters in there. I've also got small little pieces of fake corn, sort of like the quarter fake food, a larger quarter fake food. So in that pot is like say essentially the visual ones, the ones that are going to stand out about, you know, on the lake bed amongst the, uh, the solid bag contents. What I've also got is the ones that we released last year, the pellet coloured ones, so they come in a light sort of pellet colour and a darker pellet colour. Just something that's not as blatant and as obvious as uh, sort of like the, you know, the sort of fluorescent colour ones. These ones are a little bit more subtle, again in 10 mil and again in wafters, meaning they're just going to sit there pretty whilst that hook is just led flat amongst the contents of the bag. So the actual material that I've been using to make the solid bag rigs is the, uh, the Supernova. It's an actual dedicated solid bag rig braid because it is, like I say, uncoated. It's uh, supple and uh, it allows obviously the bag, to the, uh, the rig to be folded up within the bag once you're making your whoops once you're making your solid bag so it allows you to be able to obviously manipulate the braid to so obviously just fit in nicely inside the bag when you're compacting it down with uh, with your contents of the bag so that's my uh, my go-to rig today I'm using obviously barbless hooks because the uh, the fishery state that you have to use barbless hooks so that's my uh, that's my go-to rigger today that's what I'm using on all three rods currently until I feel like I maybe need to change or I want to chop or change something on one of the rods but uh, but yeah that's just finished off I haven't mentioned with a little mini tail rubber uh, tail rubber because that will allow me to just hook the loop of the rig at this end that will allow me to hook that over the quick change swivel that's tied directly to the main line for ease of basically swapping over rigs if I'm lucky enough to have a fish. So what I'm using actual inside the bag itself is anything from 2mm pellet up to 4mm pellet. So in there I've got 2mm krill pellet, um, a mixture of sort of 2mm, 3mm, 4mm uh, blood worm pellet and there's also some fish meal uh, pellet in there as well all in in the Baytech range um, as you can see the rig would just get placed inside the corner of the bag the bag would obviously get filled up to uh, sort of about a centimeter off the top of the uh, of the pellet itself and obviously just drop would be dropping the lead in and then t licking and sticking around the stem of the uh, stem of the lead this has also got some ADF fish meal inside the bag, a method mix ground bait, again another product that we released last year for one reason in particular and basically once I've kind of licked and sticked this bag and compacted it all down and tucked the corners in and stuff like that, um, I basically get an oral syringe and then in this tub that I've got here it's basically a little mixture of some hot chilli oil and uh, some stick mix, li stick mix liquid. So this has got the the krill stick mix, li stick mix liquid in it. I might actually be able to get my words out. But uh, yeah, that's got the oil in there and a stick mix liquid. And uh, basically, before I cast out, I just give the tub a little good, sh a good shake. I uh, you might have seen this before in a couple of my videos. I basically just put the syringe into the uh, into the pot and then slowly draw out some of the uh, some of the oil into the syringe as so and then basically I'm just jabbing it into the bag and basically squirting as much of this sort of oil that will go in the bag before uh, before it starts to sort of like seep back out on itself so once the bag's tied be nice and tight compact it down a bit like that really and that going up the stem of the bag and then I'm just getting the syringe I won't actually do it with oil in, but I'm getting the syringe, jabbing it inside the bag, squeezing it down, and then basically the bag becomes sort of full. All these sort of like little holes and stuff like that become full of the oil and the stick mix liquid. And the oil then also obviously sticks to the ground bait within the bag as well, meaning that it's going to stay within the sort of concentrated area of the solid bag for a lot longer because it's got the ground bait and stuff to stick to. Once that's in there, 
you got a good while before you actually chuck that out so there's no rush to you know jab it in there run down to the bank and kind of chuck it out into the lake you got a while before that uh before that starts to out because like I say the stick mix liquid and the oil both PVA friendly so that's the kind of uh, set well that is the setup that I've got on each of the three rods what I do once I've got the rods in I will talk to you about exactly how I've got my uh, solid bag set up on each of the three rods I've got out at the moment nothing else is happening and as I mentioned I wanted to just talk you through the setup and how I've kind of got my all three of my rods set up for solid bag use now really simply I've opted for the clay quarter tubing just to sort of uh, mimic what the lake beds like down to a quarter solid bag stem and then we have a two and a half ounce inline lead now it's got a real short sort of insert on it in which the uh, the actual solid bag stem just slides on, on top of. That's in there, nice and snug. Allows you to get the, the lead inside the bag. It gives you a little bit more to uh, sort of like lick and stick the, uh, the, the centimetre top of the bag, lick and stick around it. Now obviously the l actual line itself goes through the middle of all of this. So the line, main line comes through the tubing, through the stem, through the lead, out the end, the other, out the sort of hole in the lead end, and then that's tied to a quarter sort of quick change swivel. That allows me to, as I mentioned earlier, with the rig and the loop, allows me to hook that onto the actual swivel itself, push the little sort of uh, sleeve over the top of the, uh, the swivel and um, basically allows me quick change of my rig in the eventuality that I've got a fish or I want to kind of switch it up and change the hook bait and stuff I can have rigs ready, hook a new one on, bang it in a bag and away you go. So I've got this set up on all three of my rods it's safe, it's effective, you can take this to basically any fishery there are sort of lead core bands and stuff on this lake as sort of like many other lakes around the country so this is literally the easiest and simplest way that I do my solid bags you can tailor the sort of tubing to however long you want this is probably about a foot foot and a half absolute maximum and uh, yeah it's a real safe and effective way of, uh, of using solid bags to be quite honest with you so what I'm going to do now get this one uh, get this one filled up ready to go get the other two in I'm going to decide where I want to plonk them for the next sort of two three hours and see if I can nick a bite from a from another spot around the sort of my area of the lake as such but yeah just wanted to talk you through the the real basic simple setup of how I've got all three in my rods for my solid bag fishing on this session rods in just because it's uh, sort of a good three three hours or so now since uh, I put them out this morning and no word of a lie I've literally just finished um, <clears throat> just licking and sticking the final bag and one has literally nutted out probably about I don't know two rod lengths out in front of me so uh, without further ado I'm going to um, get one of these solid bags and that rod and literally I've just underarm out in front of me. Yeah, literally, it was only a little one, but it just come completely out of the water. I couldn't believe it. Literally, just sat there, just went, and yeah, just lumped out in front of me. So I'm gonna get one of these box, uh, bags, underarm it down, literally two rod lamps out in front of me, and uh, yeah, hopefully that wind's brought a few of these fish into this area, and fingers crossed, I might just be able to nick one. Another one kind of headed towards the corner of the island. 
obviously there ain't nothing in pegs one and two at the moment so uh, I'm just thinking if anything is coming around that island then uh, I've just kind of moved it like a rod length or so left um, if anyone obviously does come into those two swims and I will, will pull it in away but for the moment whilst I've got that little bit of spare water I'm just going to give it a couple of hours and see just you know moving it a rod length or two away from where we had it earlier makes a difference but I've still got one one rod behind me over here wind he took my hat off he just put it on this margin so let's get out of this wind a minute what i have done is i have walked up that margin and um i've put a small handful of the the 10 mil uh might have some might actually have some still left in this uh, tray a small handful just kind of crushed down just squeezed down small handful of the new bait tech 10 mil krill and tuners so I've just been, that, as I was mentioning earlier, that wind is hacking into that corner and seeing that one in short there as well, literally as I just finished that third rod, um, I think what I'm going to do is actually now stick a rod on, on that margin. I'm just going to walk it through, through the reeds, literally lower it down into the edge and uh, yeah, as I said, I'll put a small handful of these 10 millers these 10 millers down there earlier so i'm just going to lower that solid bag down and just walk the rod back and get it back on uh, get it back on the pod but yeah as soon as you step out from this hut that wind is just like whoosh, literally it's crazy so uh so yeah i think i'm going to do that after seeing that fishing close and uh, hopefully a little change of uh, all three all three spot spots might actually bring me a bite fingers crossed so get rid of them let's get this rod out and uh, yeah, fingers crossed we can nick a bite. Right, well, it's just coming up to three o'clock and uh, I'm still scratching for a, for a bite on this session. So decided I'm gonna get down to the shop, gonna get myself half a pint of maggots, split split it between three rods literally put a solid bag out back on each rod go and bait up with uh, like i say a third of the maggots per rod over the top of it and hope just that little bit of something uh, sort of uh, movement from the maggots and stuff a little bit of something different down there might just buy me a bite but that's what i'm going to do anyway just going to go and get my uh get my car now get into the shop I'd say get some maggots keep my fingers crossed that that's gonna buy me a bike last solid bag all made other two rods have gone out this one is the last one don't know if you can see in the corner there all three rods the wafters have just had sort of like four or five maggots just tipped off with a little bit of bait floss nothing too crazy try not to uh sort of like pierce the maggots too much so that it melts the solid bag but uh yeah nice small little parcel going out short rod and the rod over to the island both had a scattering handful of uh, a few handfuls of maggots over the top like i said i only bought half a pint so there's a nice little parcel of bait a scattering of maggot over the top of them and uh yeah a wafter with four or five tipped on the top so this is going out for like i say the last rod for the last few hours and uh yeah sitting on it until the until the bitter end so let's get this rod out get these uh rest of these rest of these maggots out there and uh, keep everything crossed that I can nick a, a last minute bite. We are 
down to the last hour of the session. The wind has seemed to have uh, died down a little bit, although it did just try and uh, take my landing net off into the uh, middle of the lake. But um, yeah, I managed to get that back luckily. But uh, yeah, it seems to have chilled down a little bit. But uh, the sun has come out. I'm just trying to look pretty much just kind of air dry, use the wind to my advantage to dry a few bits and pieces off, really. Um, the lake, I'd say the sun is coming, it's come back out. The lake's just lit up by this sort of break in the clouds. But uh, unfortunately, not a single one of these has started to sing for me yet. Like I say, I've got an hour left to try and nick a bite. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I've kind of went to the shop quickly, got half a pint of maggots and just thought, you know, I'd go. It's all, it's all or nothing. Just try and see if I could uh, <clears throat> initiate any sort of little bit of feeding frenzy, really, to be quite honest with you. Um, obviously, the solid bags through the day, just a static solid bags with no, you know, no actual movement in them as such, um, haven't really done me a bite. And uh, at the moment, the maggots aren't really doing anything for me either. Apart from, like I say, that one show that was literally just you know, two more lengths out from down here. I've not seen a single thing um, anywhere else throughout the day, which is why I kind of stayed put, to be quite honest with you. Um, <clears throat> I was hoping that maybe it would have materialised into something more, but, uh, but yeah, it hasn't happened so far. Conditions have been just all over the place today. Like I say, one minute it's raining, next minute it's sunny, then it's just overcast, the wind dies down, then it picks back up, and it's just literally been like that all day. Like, when it's sunny and I've just stood out here, it's actually quite pleasant. But then, uh, like I say, the sun goes in, the rain moves over, and it actually feels rather fresh, to be fair. When I was down there in the shop, the end of that wind, it is feeling pretty, uh, pretty nippy, to be quite honest with you. But somehow the fish, like I say, that one that nutted out with just after lunchtime, just down there, we are on the end of it to, with, within reason. So even if I did want to sort of like move up the back end, there is no room at the end because all three swims up that back end are, uh, are occupied, unfortunately. But like I say, in, this, in literally the half of the lake that I've got behind me, I've not seen anything else other than that show really close in. So, um, so yeah, I think I've just got to kind of uh, pray to the, the gods above that um, my efforts of getting out today in these pretty, uh, pretty mental conditions are rewarded. But, um, but yeah, fingers crossed something, something happens in the last sort of hour before dark. Got to be off, I believe, at six o'clock. Um, so I'll kind of milk it right up to sort of about ten to chuck the stuff in the car, and then that'll be that. So fingers crossed, we can try and do something in between then and now. So. Well, unfortunately, that is the end of that gods are in it's probably about 10 to 6 now and I've just got to go down and grab the car just down there and get this lot in the back and make my way home unfortunately uneventful last few hours the maggots didn't do me any uh, didn't do me any favors didn't manage to nick myself a bite I was watching the water like an absolute hawk just for any sort of giveaway or sign or anything that may or may have happened just to be able to put a rod on it really and try and nick myself a fish but just wasn't to be um, don't really think the conditions today have helped me in that much to be quite honest with you with it being so up and down up and down but uh, that's fishing can't win them all but um, <clears throat> yeah if you've got this far in the video thanks for watching hope it gives you a little bit of an insight to sort of this peg as well sort of as well as the fishery and uh, yeah we go again a couple of weeks time we're going to a pretty cool venue so keep an eye out on that one but, um, but yeah, I'm going to make my way home now, like I say, go and grab the car, get this into the back of the boot and uh, go and join, go and join the, uh, the rush hour traffic, I'm sure. So hopefully it's a nice, smooth, steady journey home. As normal, thanks for watching. Um, feel free to look, give it a like, give it a comment below. I'll pretty much try and reply to all of you. And uh, if you're out and about yourselves, enjoy. Hope you manage to be a bit more successful than me. But for now, I want to go and get the car. That, uh, that wind is pretty cold still and my hands are freezing holding this camera so I will catch up with you guys very very soon and again thanks for watching as always.